What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're going to be checking out a game called Heretic Operative. Hope you guys are all buckled in because it's time to play what I've had described to me as a board game about the occult and about all kinds of other things. I've had it kind of compared to like Arkham Horror and a few other titles that I'm really, really a fan of in real life. I personally believe that Arkham Horror, if you've got the table space for it, is probably one of the better board games ever made. And so the second that they mentioned that that was a reference point for their development, I was like, well, damn, you know I gotta check the game out now. So let's try it on out and see if we're any good at being a heretic operative, shall we? Let's see here. We gotta choose a story deck. This determines the storyline and the events of the game. Complete all of the chapters to win. We've got the initiation. No wins yet. The first one will grant you some bonus XP. A new heretic operative attracts the attention of the cult. Okay. Our operative is apparently the Virian Spellbinder. All right, a veteran heretic with strong arcane skills. We've also got the cult that we can join. The Serpent Cult is the only cult that is available, so apparently it's about to get very, very snake-like up in here. I'm not a big snake guy myself, but you know. Cultists will have poison attacks, cult sites transform into snake pits. I don't like snakes, man. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the appeal of having a snake as a pet. I just don't get it. I'm just like, eh, eh. I'm pretty sure that thing would eat you if you died. I'm almost positive. I'm pretty sure the only reason it doesn't kill you is because it knows that you're bigger than it. Then again, I suppose you could say the same thing for cats, but, you know. Uh oh, I'm in trouble now in the comments. I said a thing about cats. Uh, Tranquil Mind can use Contemplation to reduce Corruption. Imperial Collegiate, plus one starting lore. Several starting spells. All right. Operative, there is an emergency. A commoner is nearby, the local merchant. She shows a talent for magic and has attracted the interest of the cult. Recruit Octavia, the merchant, and make a heretic operative out of her before the cult ruins another mage. Okay, so I gotta go to Woodbridge Farmstead. Yes, go there. Oh my god, we did it. The fields of the Midlands are dotted with farms like the Woodbridge Farmstead. Quiet, rural, and peaceful. These farmers know the old ways, but are also superstitious folks and not prone to trusting strangers or magic. I mean, I don't trust magic either. Like, I just don't like magicians, though, I guess is what I'm saying. So we got the Museum District, Coliseum, the Harbor. We've got Copex Tavern. What else is going on around here? After you move your operator to the farmstead, you can end your turn. Okay, I will consider doing that momentarily. I just wanted to look around first, though. Like, I wanted to see what was available on the map before I did that. The turn has been ended. Alright, jump to the next location with an adventure, or what is this right here? What's going on on this side? <gasps> There's a card. Two Templars appear at the farmstead just as you make contact with the merchant. Come, we can't let them see us. Why? They hunt the cult, not us. Aren't we a cult? Like, did they hunt the other cult? Like, we're not the only cult? Like, we're competing with other cultists, I assume? So, like, there's actually free market competition going on in between cults right now. That'll make all the libertarians happy. See, this is the free market system apparently at work. You don't just have one cult to choose from. You have many cults to choose from. And may the best cult win. Alright, so I convinced her to move. We have two social skills. Alright. The target is nine. You explain to Octavia that the church doesn't care if you are the cult. They will attack anyone who practices any kind of magic. Yeah, that wasn't like a golden roll. That was pretty awful. But she hesitates and they approach. When the first of them is close, you attack. With surprise on your side, both Templars are knocked to the ground after a short scuffle. You grab her arm and run. You were injured after escaping the Templars. Minus one health. Well, I mean, who would have known that we were going to roll two ones? And a six, you know what I mean? Like, eh. You've arrived at the farmstead and found the merchant. Convince her to join the heretics, then move her to the hideout. So click on the farmstead and see the merchant. I think that's her right there. 
Traveling the dusty roads with a caravan is no longer enough for the merchant. They are anxious to join the fight against the cult directly and are willing to devote their considerable resources to the cause. Oh, apparently we're, a, we're, we're against the cult? I thought we were a cult too. I mean, look at this guy that we hang out with. This doesn't seem like an individual who's against the cult. He's definitely on the cult right now. Like, he's never kicked that habit in his life. She's a controllable operative with social skills. Alright, I will spend my five influences. Move Octavia to thy hideout. Alright, Octavia, go back to the hideout. It's all good. And then the Virian Spellbinder, I don't know, go over there or something. I don't know what we're doing in any of these locations, but maybe it'll turn out okay. I have spells and abilities, contemplation of the arcane. Okay. Do I have any items in my inventory? Unknown spellbook. Draw from the spellbook and add it to the Virian Spellbinder. Okay. Let's see here. The more the mere presence of this book fills you with an unsettling yearning. What little of it you can decipher is confusing allegories with unclear implications. While it could be quite taxing, by utilizing some learned lore and arcane skill, practical applications of night magic could be learned. So if I pay a lore, I get a challenge in the arcane, and I can draw two from the spell deck and keep one. Yeah? Okay. I assume that it's still there, but it requires my Axioni point. Gotcha. What is that? She's a spy master? Oh no, it looks like there's other people here. So we've got mentors, we've got an Auspex, we've got a Forager. So maybe we're playing against the cult. See, I thought we were like joining a cult, and then we're going to be running around doing all kinds of occult stuff. Apparently we were choosing our enemy. Just like at the beginning of Arkham Horror, you choose which greater old one you want to fight against. If you're playing the game on easy mode anyways. Real Arkham Horror fans play random. No, I'm just kidding. I usually, I pick the uh, greater, when I play Arkham Horror with my friends, I pick the greater old one that you're going to be facing based on how good they are at the game. How much they've played and what kind of game they're looking for and how much time we have to play too. Because some of them are easier to kill than others. What does that do? Additional information about this region? Oh, are there other regions? Let me guess. The Desolate Isle is probably where all the bad stuff's going to happen, right? What's going on down here? Some orcs? Damn, there's orcs and things around? Alright. Suppose I'll end my turn. It feels like something is about to happen, but it doesn't. Patience is part of being an operative. Alright. So we got... What is that stat right there? What did we get? To survive as a heretic operative, the merchant will need to know some spells. Select the operative with the highest arcane skill, and then use the spell book in your inventory to research a new spell. Who's got the highest arcane skill? I would assume it would be this guy, right? His, he's called a spellbinder. So I assume that would be on the nature of all things. All right. Yay! We rolled a 14. Researching the book is challenging as the topic it covers are vast in scopes, but you find what you need and gain some fundamental insights. Okay. Reveal my car. Apocalypse. We learn how to end the world, bro. An ultimate attack drawing upon the very life essence of the caster. You lose a health, you get 30 corruption, plus 6 combat dice, and then fire dice get a bonus multiplier when matches are rolled. Holy bejesus, man. Sounds like we got, like, the ultimate spell in the entire game. We got, like, the ultimate, like the Knights of the Round, calling down fire from the heavens. I feel like Flame Strike corrupts us less, and it may be more, more useful. Alright, so I have... I have Flamen striking now. What else do I do? Anything else? I suppose I'll move him back on over to Pepperidge Farms. Alright, so we have new events. Timmy has slipped and gone down the well. You have a rope around him, but the boy is stout. Apparently I can use a rumor to avoid this card and do a different one. I gotta hit a target of nine. Oof. Something tells me Timmy ain't gonna make it. Oh my god, we rolled a ten. Hell yeah. The strain you have on the rope and after some hard lifting, Timmy is free. His parents are influential members of the community and they're relieved to have their son back. Like, who are they influential with? The baker? 
Alright, so we'll get some cash right there. And we've got another event over here. The camp bullies gather and look you over. Their leader opines that your shoes are funny looking. Are they though? I feel like convincing them to go away. We're going to make like a diatribe right now. A carefully constructed rhetoric about why they should not kick us in the dick until we vomit. I only need to roll a three. It's pretty unlikely that I'm not going to roll a three. You try to get the bullies to listen to reason and it works. They apologize and move on. What could be better than getting someone to apologize? There's something in the air. The meter on the right shows the cult progress. When a cell with an exclamation point is filled, you draw an event card. Event cards are linked to the current story. Uh-oh. I don't know how I feel about that. The cult will not give up easily. The cult is sent to find the merchant must be eliminated. Move an operative to any location where there's a cultist. Combat will happen automatically at the end of a turn if your operatives are in the same location as the enemy. So we've got to kill all the cultists. What is my combat rank? Because his combat rank seems like it's probably better than mine. Just saying. It's a valid concern. Let's see. We could get an herbalist. When recruited, enable spending an action point for the following effect. Add an herbalist special to the Virian Spellbinder for plus three health on use, but requires an action point. That'll cost us four influence. I think we only have six right now. We've got lore, we've got rumors, and we've got fate. What else do we have? A shopkeeper. I can draw three items from the item deck. Keep one for two gold. Seems all right. There's also the farmer over here. I'll probably recruit. I'll probably recruit the shopkeeper, maybe. So apparently, I have the shopkeeper now. Let's reveal some cards. We've got the heirloom sword. Notes on suspicious activity. And we have the spell book. Yeah, I think I'm gonna grab a sword. Got three uses remaining, so I assume it like breaks at some point or something. I don't know. Can I bring both of them over here so that we can like tag team this guy? Just like dog pile his ass. Done for the day. You stand next to a barn and watch the sun sink behind the green fields that stretch to the horizon. It's peaceful here. Oh, he's got a sword too. I guess I'll use that. So to win a combat, get enough battle points to exceed the enemy's combat rank. Play cards to roll battle dice and gain battle points. So combat begins. The Virian Spellbinder uses the Heirloom Sword. Mm. What's the difference between... Flame Strike and Firebolt, they seem like the same thing. Well, there you go. 38 points right there. And we get double damage, which I think happened from the two threes being rolled right there, I think. Because it said that when we get, I think when we roll doubles or something like that, it doubles the damage. Either way, we killed that guy, and he did not punch us in the face with a knife or any other deadly weapon. So I don't know exactly what's going on right now, but we won. So that's pretty sweet. I mean, these cloaks are used by the cult to covertly identify one another. Turn into the Cathedral District for a reward. It can be sold. Okay. A new cultist has been recruited in the Elven Archive. Okay. I don't really know. Should I kind of head that way, I guess? It sort of seems like I probably should. I'm going to hire the herbalist. I don't know how important of a stat influence is. So I'm going to spend it pretty freely today. So we gain two fate and we got plus three health on use. You sure? Oh yeah, there it is. 
Sweet. Well, apparently I've got all kinds of stuff going on now. We've got two uses left on that sword. Let's go ahead and I guess we'll move this guy over to here. Busy day and night, Copex Tavern is a good place for information or, you know, rye. All right. I have no action points remaining. Well, lame. Let's end the turn then. Walking the southern acres, you trip over something half buried in the soil. What is it? Ooh, an Utuk and Amber. A heavy chain with a large amber pendant inscribed on a band around the pendant is Utuk. It's difficult to make out, but it looks like a strange creature is imprisoned in the amber. It's got a magical aura. Okay, so it gives me memories of Utuk, which lowers my tranquility, but it gives me plus two arcane. Is that permanent that I get the plus two to arcane? I mean, I already don't. She's already got a minus one tranquility. So, I mean, how much worse could it get? You know what I mean? Like, we're already in the net. We already owe you tranquility. So, cheers erupt from a table nearby as a smiling woman sweeps her pile of winnings away. The dice are being passed. I'll gamble. Hey, we made a gold. Nice. The enemy is on the move. You can feel it. When a cell with an X is filled, you draw a cult card. Cult cards are linked to the current enemy. All right. Uh, where's the current enemy at? Oh, yeah, I forgot I was corrupted, huh? Because I casted a magical spell. Yeah, I did like some magical, magic -y guy stuff. I'm going to send the Virian Spellbinder over here because it seems like important of me. Well, it seems important that, like, I eliminate some of these dudes. It seems to be implying that it wants me to kill cultists. So, I'm going to do that. I don't have any action points left, though, so I'm going to have to wait it out. The farmer invites you to sample son of his boilo, which tastes like fire. It's too late, and you realize you're in a drinking contest. All right. Oh, we got to roll a 10. That's going to suck. Good luck with that. Apparently, I lost all my money in a drinking contest. How to know you might be an alcoholic. You are so confident in your drinking abilities that you spend your entire slush fund trying to prove it. There's a sense of impending dread that settles across the land. Cultists are on the move. The enemy is powerful. You find strength, or you can find strength in numbers. While you can always begin with a heretic operative, you can recruit additional operatives to your team. Check locations on the map to see where you might find others, but in some stories, they are not all available. If all the heretic operatives are killed, the game is lost. Well, it doesn't really seem like it matters if we have more operatives, because we only get two AP and they're shared between all of our characters, so, like, I don't know. Like, it seems like they're shared between all of our characters, so any benefit you might have by having more than one character just feels kind of pointless, I guess. Like, I guess if the, AP, if the AP was, like, per character, then I'd be kind of excited about getting new characters. But since it's not shared and I can still only do two actions per turn, no matter how many agents I have, then, eh, eh, not that important. Chapter 4, kill them all. Um, not much of a killer. I'm not going to say that I'm, like, the nicest of nice guys, but I'm definitely not a killer, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not who I am. So, like, can we maybe, like, convince them to see the error of their ways and become friends? It's battle! Shoot some fire. Yeah. Fire. Sword. Damn it. Basic attack. Well, apparently he's super dead. When does he deal damage to me? Out of curiosity. Are there, like, multiple... So, how many rounds are there in combat? Like, if you fail to do it in, like, three rounds, then you take that penalty, maybe? Like, I don't know how many rounds there are, but it seems like it's just me attacking him. But I was trying to put it in, like, a board game perspective. In a board game, they would give you a target to roll for with the items or whatever that you have. And I'm assuming that it's similar here, and then there's, like, a fail criteria over here if you fail to do that in a certain amount of time. Well, there's another cloak. Cultists have apparently infiltrated that location over there. We should probably get moving. You know, like, head in that direction, maybe? I wonder if there's a way for me to get from there to there. 
Hmm. I don't know. We can go to Copex. Uh, we've got an informant, so that gives us plus one rumors. We've got a barkeep. We've got a mercenary veteran. Apparently that allows me to like draw some kind of like backup guy or something. I don't know. There's a lot of things not explained. And while I'm getting the hang of it right now, the game didn't really have a tutorial, so like, kind of just mashing my way through it at the moment. We have a thing that happened. You can see that it will not be a fair fight. One argues with a mercenary while another approaches from behind with a blackjack in hand. I can order them to stop. I can join the fighting on the merc side. Or I can trip the thug with the blackjack. Let's see here. The standard by which all other banners are judged. So pay two gold plus six combat dice, iron dice. Deliver modest damage and are boosted by physical skills. So apparently we've got like some kind of mercenary. Oh, but I need to have two gold for it to work. Gotcha. Oh, it shows you the result before the dice go down. That's kind of a bummer. I kind of wish that it didn't. Like the dice actually rolled and then you saw the result. I would like it a lot better if that was the case where you like roll. Uh oh. Anguinius is growing rapidly in strike. The streets are overrun with snakes, and the serpent cult worship is becoming common. Well, that's not good. Apparently, things have gotten worse. I'm, I'm trying to bring him back around because this lady right here has no combat skill. Like, she's a, she's a talker. I mean, on the plus side, we got lots and lots of influence, though. I don't know if you ever desired to be influential, but... We are influential. The Frontier Outpost is technically one of the Empire's holdings, but at the edge of civilization, Empress Vokula's laws are enforced in somewhat haphazard manners. Dangerous place full of dangerous people and under constant threat from the things that live in the wasteland. All right, yeah, you come down here too. I might need the backup. The outpost is always short on trustworthy guards who can keep thieves from the warehouses. It is easy work for those that need a little coin. Eh. I'm about to murder a bunch of people. I think I'm okay with it. So we got Earthen. We got Blood Whispers. Five Corruption. Blood Combat Dice will cause a point of any damage. Oh, really? The Blood Dice hurt me. Ew. I don't like that. I guess I'll cast that, although I've got a feeling my Corruption's probably gonna be a problem here Oof, a seven on three dice you apparently I lost hey we killed that one though I was gonna say you better hope for a good there's a snake Ooh. A big snake guy. <laughs> Two cultists have been recruited in the harbor district of the Lost Temple. Okay. Like, it's starting to make sense, like, the way that the game flows. Listening carefully to those around you, you hear a rumor of events nearby. Rumors are currency in the game. You can spend them in certain situations or use them to redraw an adventure card. All right. Well, apparently I failed at, like, everything over here. So I think we're going to have to hang out here a little longer. The outpost is under siege from orcs. We've got a cell leader. I do have influence. A dubious merchant. When recruited, enable spending an action point for the following effect. A guard captain. A quartermaster. Yeah, I'm going to grab that real quick. Because that allows me to get plus one influence per turn. So that I can... I like the fact that you're, like, accumulating sort of like a spy cell of people that are helping you out with all your stats and everything else like that. I dig that. It's, this is very much a board game. You can tell that it's either a direct conversion of a real board game or it's basically just a digital board game. Like, it's... Definitely kind of following... New to the outpost at Cretan. His entourage surround you. I'm in charge here. You have to pay the toll. I don't... I mean... Meh, meh.
I just need one more. Yeah, re-roll that so that I win. Wait, what? Target is 13. There we go. God. God. I was going to say, I don't think it's possible that she can win that fight. She just doesn't have enough dice. Might as well keep it going. We got to kill. Oh, we got Orcish Rage. It raised his target thing. You're really kind of struggling with this cultist over here. Rumors reach you of a cultist at Kopex Tavern. Yeah, there's kind of cultists like everywhere right now. It's kind of like cultists all over the place. And my corruption is like brutal at the moment. Maybe you should like go elsewhere since you like suck at everything. I don't have an action point right now. Should probably go sell those cloaks for whatever they're worth. And we got this last combat right here. Rumors of an impending orc attack prompted many to depart the outpost. Things are quiet with them gone. Hey, we did it in two turns. And I haven't corrupted and turned into a monster, so that's good. So there goes another cultist. That only took entirely too much work to get done. The farmer's hound, Chipper, barks all day long at everything. Not much else really occurs. All right. I'll take that over a negative event. Snakes are slithering out of their burrows and into the streets, possessed by some dark intent. The cultists celebrate this good omen in advance. Damn, dude, they're like everywhere right now. Apparently one spawn, oh my god. There's a giant sigil growing on my forehead right now. Pretty sure there's a giant chance that I'm going to become evil. Uh, my name is Splattercat. This game is called Heretic Operative. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed your time spent here. If you want to get the game for yourself, i got a link for you down below. I do like the game, uh, but it's taken me some... i got to... I, I gotta get used to like the Virian Spellbinder, having to use Corruption every single time. I'm thinking focusing on items, like having never played before, I think the better way to optimize your chances of winning is to focus more on items so that you're less reliant on, so that you're less reliant on spells because you can get some Corruption real, real fast. But anyways, if you like this video, don't forget to feed it up with a like. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for stopping on in. I do, everybody. Take care.